So you're in the market for a great sub, but you don't want to break the bank. Well, I know of a big black beast of a base box that I want to tell you about. This is the review of the Monolith 12 inch THX Ultra subwoofer. Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover. And on this channel, we bring you the tech of entertainment. So if you're into that, then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. So after I reviewed the SVS PB3000, I got a bunch of comments from people saying that I should also check out the Monolith subs. So I went out and I got the Monolith 12 because it was pretty similar to the PB3000 in size and came in a few hundred dollars cheaper too. So first let's go over the specs of this beast so we know what we're dealing with. From here on out, I'll be referring to the sub as the Mono 12 because the word Monolith and my tongue just doesn't agree. Every time I try to say it, it's like I dipped it in Novocaine. So Let's not do that. So it's a 12 inch ported subwoofer from the AV arm of Monoprice. As far as specs go, it's a 12 inch glass fiber cone that's mated to a 500 watts RMS and 900 watts peak power amplifier. Together they push the driver to have an 8mm peak to peak excursion which produces a frequency response of 18Hz to 200Hz in extended EQ and 20Hz to 200Hz in THX EQ at minus 60B and that's with both ports open. Now those of you paying attention will notice that I didn't mention plus or minus 3dB at all just now because it's not the standard plus or minus 3dB measurement that manufacturers publish which tells you how flat of a frequency response a speaker has. No, this is more of a measurement of peak output. So it's basically saying that at negative 60 dB lower than its highest output level, it can go all the way down to 18 Hertz. I'd much rather see them publish the industry standard plus or minus 3 dB frequency range instead. So people don't have to guess or do their own measurements or try to interpret tables or charts with minimal labeling that they have on their website. Of course, frequency response will vary depending on your room when you consider things like room game, but it would be good to know what the baseline frequency response is. Okay, so now onto the design. Since it's a ported sub, it takes up a fair bit of space. It measures in at 23 inches high, 17 inches wide, and about 24 inches deep. So it's sizable enough that you'll need a good amount of space for it. It weighs in at 98 and a half pounds and comes in a variety of finishes. Oh, only black ash? Oh. That said, I really like the design of this thing. I mean, you can only do so much from a design perspective because it's just a big box, but the angles on the edges give it a very modern look, and I like the cloth cover grill. So much so that I'd maybe even consider leaving it on. Maybe. It's actually my favorite ported sub design in the size class. If you turn the sub around, then you'll find the controls for fine tuning the performance. On the back, you'll find the crossover dial, which you might not need. Then you have the phase control, the lever control beside that. Then you have the switches to enable the crossover, the EQ selection switch to select THX or extended mode, and finally the one for power. The extended mode has a lower roll off point than the THX mode, and that's the one that I primarily use, especially since after I calibrated the sub for my room, I didn't hear a discernible difference between the two. So I call this sub a beast and I did that for good reason. A ported sub like this is primarily suited for home theater applications and that's where this thing makes a name for itself. I think this is one of those cases where the performance is more than what the pure specs suggest. I mean, 500 watts RMS driving a 12 inch woofer doesn't sound like much, but when I integrated this thing into my home theater, it most definitely made itself known. <laughs> of which getting the sub properly integrated isn't as easy as the more expensive subs out there with wireless controls but that's one thing that you'll be trading for that under $900 entry price convenience and peak power but then again that might not be a bad trade 
One of my favorite movies to test subwoofers with is a scene from Interstellar where they're traveling through the wormhole. The scene has so much LFE for such a long time that it will literally shake things on your walls. And that's exactly what this sub did. Scenes like that one and the intro scenes to Overlord were especially amusing to me because of how much air was being displaced by the sub. So much so that I could actually feel the breeze from the ports on my feet. The sub is stellar with action movies. For my room, the receiver had it calibrated to 0 dB and I upped that to plus 6 dB. I always run my subs a few dB hot because one, I believe the calibrated level of my denim receiver has the subs a bit too low and two, I love bass. But after that, no matter if it was the subsonic rumble to build suspense, the room shaking LFE of the car landing in the intro to Blade Runner 2049, or the absolute chaos that is the first chase scene in Mad Max, this sub managed to fill the room with deep, powerful bass with impact you could feel in your chest. I was really impressed with how it performed and how it just brought the entire experience to life. Sure, the sub had a lot of bass for a medium sized room like mine, but if you have something on the larger side, you might want to invest in a bigger, more powerful sub or even two of these. Especially since the gain was already set in the positive territory for a room of this size. If you haven't checked it out yet, then you should check out the movie demo that I did linked in the card up there and in the description. And while you're at it, check out the comparison I did with this and the SVS PB3000, which is a similar sub as far as dimensions goes, but is more powerful and has more features. I make demos and comparisons like that so you guys out there can have at least some idea of how they perform in a real world setting and why I come to certain conclusions in my review. So what about music? Can a ported sub be good for music as well as home theater? Well, it can be. This sub comes with two foam plugs which you can use to seal the ports in order to give the bass more transience for things like music. In fact, I also made a music demo which I'll be publishing very soon. That compares the performance of the sub in a sealed versus ported mode, so make sure to stay tuned for that one. But as far as actual sealed performance goes, there was a definite improvement in the sound of the bass. It improved the musicality of it, but I wouldn't say it was a degree to rival an actual sealed sub. Other subs I've tested with built-in DSPs to help sealed mode perform better in that regard. But that said, the low end that the Mono 12 created was never distracting and still blended well with the soundstage. So who is this sub for? Well, if you have a smaller to medium sized room and you want a high performance sub primarily for home theater or gaming applications and you're okay with not having customizations and convenience features of the more expensive subs like the custom DSP, wireless control then I think you should certainly consider the sub. I was thoroughly impressed with how it performed and I'd say that not only does it punch above its price bracket but it also looks good doing it. Sound off in the comments and let me know your thoughts on the sub. Are you actually interested in getting one? Let me know. Also if you like home theater reviews like this and want to see more then you should definitely consider subscribing. Consider it then just do it. And if you want to help support the channel so we can bring you more content like this, then you should definitely get a home theater or gaming t-shirt from the merch store. That's linked in the description. You should even see some designs under the video. Don't forget to like the video if you liked the video and share it with a friend. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friend in Neighborhood Villa Man saying, peace.